There's a lot of confusion between XSL and CSS. CSS is cascading style sheets and XSL is extensible style sheet transform language. So right there in the, in the titles of those two you can see why there might be some confusion. They're both called style sheets. Inside of transforms in fact we have the style sheet element. That's the root element of every transform. So what is the difference between XSL and CSS? And when would you use one, when would you use the other? So let's first start with a brief definition of each of those and then I think from the definition it'll be pretty clear what the relationship is and when you should use one and when you should use another. CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, was invented to do away with the proliferation of attributes on HTML tags that were there to fine tune the display. So as time went on with, with HTML, more and more attributes were being added simply to do formatting things to a tag. And those formatting things just got too complex and so CSS was invented as a way to do away with all the attributes having to do with formatting and instead, instead centralize all the formatting code and commands in one place, the CSS file. Thing, but the CSS I think is, is actually a very good idea. Um, I, I complain a little bit about the file format since it's a bizarre file format and there's no other file format I know that works like that. It's kind of like a, a, a C++ configuration file or something like that. It's a, it's really, not, uh, it's really not an easy file format to understand, um, but it does carry all of the possibilities for how to format, how to layout, how to font, how to style, how to color, how to put borders around, all that kind of stuff, any kind of HTML tag, that's all carried out in a CSS file. So a CSS file is something that a website designer uses in order to figure out how everything should look and feel. Um, we won't go into CSS in any more detail than that. I just want you to realize that you'll see CSS a lot and you should be able to get into CSS as you need in order to make display things happen or in order to decode the CSS files that you see that are, that's in the work that you'll use in this class. So CSS was invented specifically to centralize and standardize and leverage the styling that happens in a web page. Now what's XSL for? XSL, Extensible Style Sheet Transforms, are there to take XML and turn it into something else. And of course in our case the something else is usually HTML. So the, the XSL's transforms transform XML into something else. And of course that something else could also be another form of XML. So what's the relationship between transforming XML into let's say HTML and styling HTML? Well, clearly they're related. Both of them are about getting output from an XML file to display nicely on a computer screen. The CSS part happens after the XSL part. The XSL part creates the HTML tags. The CSS part formats those tags with the look and feel that you want to have on your site. So XSL transforms XML tags into HTML tags. CSS takes those HTML tags and then styles them the way you want to style them. Um, more fundamentally, XSL is all about changing the tagging, changing the nature of the tagging, changing in fact it could be the entire way or the entire tag set that's used to tag a, 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 a quantity of information. CSS on the other hand assumes that you're using a standard tag set, although those CSS attributes, that style attribute that we apply a CSS tag with, sometimes that's actually, well, let me not go there because I don't want to confuse you, I want to pull these things apart. Maybe at the very end I'll slam them back together again. XSL takes, X, it takes XML tags and transforms them into some other tag set. CSS on the other hand takes an existing tag set and figures out how to create look and feel around it. They go hand in hand. Usually the same website will use an XSL to create the basic page and will use CSS to then style that page. The XSL could go into the CSS territory by adding, for example, attributes onto, onto a table. Might put a border attribute on the table, for example. That's going into the CSS territory. The CSS is never really going to go into the XSL territory of changing the name of a tag. Okay, so pulling them way apart. CSS is all about formatting existing tags. XSL is all about creating tags from an XML information base. Now let me slam them back together again if you're ready. If you're not, forget this part, but let me slam them back together again. CSS is very often used to style 
XML tags as well. You can put a CSS class attribute on an XML tag in many um, authoring environments. And, that's, and the authoring engine, Oxygen for example, I think Oxygen will do this, I haven't tried, but certainly uh, products like Xmetal will do this, will take the CSS and figure out how to make the XML WYSIWYG. So if you have a table in XML, it'll actually format it like a table. And the CSS is used to do that. So CSS for styling, XSL for transformation, but sometimes we collide them back together again and put CSS style tags on, XS, on XML elements and then some layout engine makes, puts some styling around the XML file.